Hi, I'm Adam, thanks for stopping by. And in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this, the C64, and trying to answer the question, is it actually any good? Let's take a look at what you get in the box. Opening up the box reveals the actual computer, the C64, protected by a plastic dust cover. So let's remove this. We have the C64 here. I'll take this out. And also this other little box, box of goodness. So let's have a look at the computer first. So it's a bread bin style machine, uh, full size working keyboard. Question that I've seen a lot pop up on the internet is, does the shift lock actually latch in place? So let's try and answer that now. No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. so. How's this going to be handled? Well, I actually know the answer and uh, I'll show you guys in a little while. Next, let's take a little look around the C64. On this side, the right hand side, you would normally find two joystick ports, a power connector and a switch on the original Commodore 64. On this one, we see three USB sockets and a power button. On the rear of the C64, we find a micro USB power connector, a full size HDMI out, and a further USB socket. Gone are any expansion ports. So there's no connecting your old action replay cartridges to this, floppy drives or cassette players. Let's see what else comes in the box. So we have a stick of joy that is the C64 joystick. This is a much improved version over the mini. Uh, this has got a steel shaft and you can hear the micro switches in there. And of course it is USB. There's a quick start guide. Now in true Commodore 64 style, it has this blue uh, and white front cover. And within the box that was in the big box, we have another box. So let's take a look in here. We have our micro USB lead. We have a USB power supply. And we have an HDMI lead. So there we have it. Everything that you get within the box. The C64, the stick of joy, the HDMI lead, the micro USB, power supply and book. So let's connect this up have a look at the software and see what is it actually like. We are initially greeted by the C64 logo and upon first boot, we are then presented with the language selection. So I'm going to select English. Since I'm in the United Kingdom, I'll select the 50 Hertz output. So just choose according to where you are. The last setting to choose is the boot mode, carousel or classic. Carousel mode presents you with the built-in games. Classic mode boots to the original Commodore 64 basic screen. And that's the initial setup over with. So time to select a game and have a look at how it runs. Look how quick and easy that was to load. No faffing about inserting tapes or floppy disks. No need to type commands to load the game. And of course, the loading time is greatly reduced. Now, Glencia Mini is a fairly recent game as far as the Commodore 64 goes. This is because it was released in 2017. Now, I really love the fact that game development for the Commodore 64 is still going on. And in a little while, I'll show you a game that's been released this year. To exit a running game, press the menu button on the joystick. Looking at the row of four small buttons, the menu button is the one on the right. If I pop down into the settings menu, which is the spanner icon, then you can see some of the options that are available. Computer model lets you define whether to use the Commodore 64 or VIC-20. Yes, that's correct. This machine also has a VIC-20 mode. How cool is that? We've already defined the boot mode during the initial setup, but what if you want to change it? Well, you can do that here. Switch to classic mode takes us to the original Commodore 64 basic, where you can type your own programs in basic. Remember the shift lock key? I told you that 
The C64 has a way of handling the fact that the button doesn't latch down as per the original Commodore 64 keyboard did. When the shift lock key is pressed, a small arrow appears in the top right corner of the display. We exit the classic mode the same way as if we were running a game, just press the menu button on the joystick. Let's take a look at the display settings. Now I'm going to change the image so that it has a bit more of a classic CRT feel about it. This will add some scan lines into the image, but you won't see them on the menu only when running a game or in classic mode. Let's now run Galencia Mini again to see what it looks like with these scan lines enabled. Next I'm going to hop back onto my Windows machine and download a modern game for the Commodore 64 that was written this year. To do this, head on over to shallon64.itch.io forward slash doc hyphen cosmos. As you can see, this game has been awarded Free 64 Game of the Year 2019. If you scroll down to the download button, you'll see you can either download this for free or name your own price. Now, since it is such a good game, I do recommend that you support the developer and at least give them a little bit of money to help facilitate further development of these great games. The download will include the .cosmos bin, CRT and D64 files. Placing the CRT or D64 file on a USB stick and then inserting this USB stick into the C64 will enable you to run the game. And just before we have a quick look at this game, what I want to do is just do a, a search for Commodore 64 within itch.io just to show you the kind of new games that you will find. Here is another great game, Super Carling the Spider. Now if you want to have a quick look at this, feel free to download it yourselves, but also I've done a video featuring this and I'll put the link up at the top now and also down in the description. So you get the idea, there's quite a few games still being developed for the Commodore 64. To run a game from a USB stick, insert the USB stick into the C64 and then select the USB stick icon. Navigate to the game that you wish to load and press the fire button to load it. Doc Cosmos, the saga begins. Doc Cosmos reaches his destination on the hunt for the alien time travel device. I'm going to need a key if I want to get through here. Okay, so let's go and find the key. This first one's fairly straightforward. Collect color keys to open the doors of the same color. And here's a red door. Well, that was easy. What the? Whoa, judging by the decor, I have traveled to 1982. I need to find a power source and get out of here. In this timeline, Doc will jump a little further, but with less control. The device is used to alter timelines by pressing fire. It is recharged at these consoles. Pressing the fire button takes us back into our present timeline. Okay, so let's exit this game and look at how to shut down the C64. To shut down the C64, simply hold the power button for two seconds. You'll then see shutting down on the screen. I hope you enjoyed looking at the C64, but I still have to answer the question, is it any good? Um, I have thought, thought quite a bit about this and yes, yes, I think it is quite good. If you are comparing it to an existing original 
Commodore 64 Breadbin, then it is not the same thing. You don't have the expansion ports, etc., etc. However, for just a bit of fun, casual gaming, and downloading maybe the modern Commodore 64 written games onto USB stick, inserting them and having a quick game, yeah, it's fantastic. And the cost, yes, it's £110. Okay, it's £110 to spend to get one. But if we compare this to the cost of an original bread bin, a floppy drive, some discs, maybe an action replay cartridge or some other kind of turbo loader, then again, it's cheaper. So in that case, I think it's, it's very good. Holding it in my hands, it's not the same as holding the original 1982 machine. So it depends what you define as good. If you want to hold an original 1980s machine in your hands, then you're not going to find it any good. But for just playing games and for reliving some of your youth, yes, it's, I think it's, it's really quite good. What other alternatives are there out there apart from an original Commodore 64? And I'm not looking at emulators or anything like this running on the Raspberry Pi. In that case, you've got something like the Commodore uh, Reloaded Mark II, or you've got the Ultimate 64. Now, I've actually got an Ultimate 64 and I'll put a link somewhere up here and also somewhere down there in the description so you can check that out. Now, the Ultimate 64 costs a lot more than this. So if you're just after something quick to relive your youth and play some games, yeah, I think that this is the way forward. If you are an 8-bit computer freak and you want to insert original SID chips and you want to play and tinker, then the Ultimate 64 is maybe the way to go. But like I said, it does cost a bit more. Uh, so to sum up, is it any good? Yes, I really like it. And I will be playing with this right after I have finished recording this video. So thanks very much for watching and bye.